This day in history. Because people have got to know whether or not the presidents are crook. Well, I'm not crook. Yesterday, what our country can do for you, Mr. Gorbachev, and our country can do for you, and the people who not be failing now, a date which will live with ending ground in infamy. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender. All right, so on this day in history, uh, according to Yahoo News, May 4th, 1970, 44 years ago today, Ohio National Guardsmen opened fire during an anti-war protest at Kent State University. It killed four students and wounded nine others. So if you guys don't know the history behind this, uh, what happened at Kent State, let me allow uh, – let me please give you a, a brief history on it, a brief background of it. The students at Kent State, they were actually protesting the Vietnam War, and – you know, things had gotten out of hand because uh, the protesters were thought to be responsible for burning down an ROTC building on the campus. And according to uh, Kent.edu, this is their website, Ohio Governor James Rose flew to Kent on the morning of May 3rd, and his mood was anything but calm. At a press conference, he issued a, prov uh, a provocative statement calling campus protesters the worst type of people in America and stating that every force of law would be used to deal with them. Rhodes also indicate, indicated that he would seek a court order declaring a state of emergency. This was never done, but the widespread assumption among both Guard and university officials was that a state of martial law was being declared in which control of the campus resided with the Guard rather than the university, and all the rallies were banned. So they were trying to ban free speech, basically, uh, your right to assemble and things like that. Uh, so. Uh, they were really, you know, really trying to lock down the situation, and and maybe there was blame on both sides. Uh, again, there's still a lot of questions about what happened, but the regardless, what we do know is that the Ohio National Guard was called in to pacify the protesters, and it seemed to only end up agitating them further, from the way I understand it. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, the guardsmen they used tear gas to break up the crowd. And it didn't quite have the effect that they hoped it would. The crowd, uh, it had about 3,000 people in it, and there was uh, thought to be about 1,500 of that 3,000 were active protesters. And out of that 1,500, about 500 were considered to be the core cadre of the protesters. So anyway, when they began shooting tear gas into the crowd, uh, the crowd started throwing the tear gas back along with rocks at the guardsmen. And um, anyway, shortly after um, noon on the 4th, uh, General Canterbury, he made the decision to uh, order the demonstrators to disperse. So a Kent State police officer uh, standing by the guard made an announcement with a bullhorn. All right? and, and basically this had no effect, and the police officer uh, kind of went into the, uh, with the guardsmen, and they drove off. And they wanted to basically tell the, the protesters to, to disperse. They were trying to, to do this as, as much as they could. They went, and uh, they ended up angering more of the protesters, and more shouting happened, and rocks uh, were thrown. Anyway, th they ended up retreating, and Canterbury then ordered his men to, to load and lock their weapons, and tear gas canisters were again fired into the crowd around Victory Bell, and the guardsmen uh, began to march across the commons to disperse the rally. So the protesters moved up the steep hill, known as Blanket Hill, and then down the other side uh, of the hill uh, onto uh, Prentice uh, Hall uh, parking lot, as well as the adjoining uh, practice football field. So most of the guardsmen uh, followed, and the students uh, followed the students directly, and soon found themselves to be somewhat trapped on the practice football field because it was surrounded by a fence. And again, there was more yelling and more rock throwing. And uh, long story short, here I'll cut to the chase. The uh, the Guardsmen ended up feeling that their their lives were in danger at one point after they had retreated uh, back to the to Blanket Hill. They had already moved back, and as they arrived at the top of the hill, uh, 28 of the more than uh, 70 guardsmen turned suddenly and fired their rifles and pistols. All right, many of the guardsmen fired into the air over the ground. However, a small portion fired directly into the crowd. And altogether, there was about 61 to 67 shots that were fired in a 13 second period. And like I said, the guardsmen claimed that the students were advancing in a way that they felt that their safety was was being threatened. They claimed to fire in self-defense. 
So the courts found that the guardsmen were not legally liable for the shootings and that – and basically no guard, guardsmen were convicted. To my knowledge, I, I searched and I couldn't find any, any convictions about that. So there are still many, many questions that surround this event, and I think that it's important that we don't forget it. Would this event have ended up in this violent ending if the guardsmen hadn't been called? I would say that's pretty unlikely. I don't think that that this much loss of life would have happened. So were, were the guardsmen actually acting in self-defense? That's you know it's been defended in the court, so you know I'm not going to go against that. But uh, you know who knows if they should have been there in the first place. So who should have been held responsible for this inv this incident? You know the, the one thing is for sure for me is that whether it's peaceful or violent. The government, they only know how to respond in one way to a protest, through force. This, in my opinion, I think this was a, a turning point in the war, and it changed the hearts and minds of the people. And it did it in a fashion that, that we saw right before this. It did it – we've seen a similar situation happen like this because people, <clears throat> people changed their minds when they saw this coming in their TV – and it, it was anti-war anti protesters being shot. It's America's children at college being shot. I mean, granted, these people are over 18, but still, you know, to a lot of those, those parents who, uh, who those kids belong to, those were still their kids. So other people see this coming through their TV, and it made them start to question for the first time the war in Vietnam, whether or not it's a good thing or if we should have been there to begin with. Anyway – you know, this is a very similar situation to what we saw happen in the civil rights movement in the 1960s. You know, people don't really think about the struggles of the African American man until they started seeing them on television in their living room being shot with fire hoses and attacked by dogs. This is how people change the hearts and minds of their politicians, and and the people themselves change their hearts and minds. The, the movement really, after television, you know, uh, really became a big deal. The, the movement for civil rights really picked up because people started seeing what was happening to these people. So I think a very similar situation happened in this situation, um, and it shocked a lot of people. People were really upset to hear that this kind of violence happened, and it happened to unarmed students. So whether or not you agree or disagree that, that they needed to use that amount of force, the courts have had said that they weren't legally liable, and I'm not going to argue against that right now. But what I will point out is the fact that the students were unarmed, unarmed, and the, the, the military shot – this is – this to me – this to me, if, if it was up to me, I, I, honestly, I would think that this is a bit of an overreaction. I, I have a hard time – Understanding how they couldn't just withdraw from the situation if they thought it was going to get out of hand. I don't think that they would have needed to do that, but apparently the courts disagree with me, and I don't have all the facts. So anyway, we are moving on today. Uh, so if you want to join the conversation, please give us a call. The number to the show is 619-924-0986. Again, that's 619-924-0986. Or you can email the show at talk at onthemoveshow.com.